So with the third match of the joint training battles between Class 1A and Class 1B, My Hero Academia came correct. Season 5, Episode 8, or the 96th episode of the series in general, was amazing. This is everything that I wanted from this fight, and they did it phenomenally. Picking up where we last left off, we have Ida with his oversized leg mufflers, as he just completely styled on Mudman. The animation here is absolutely dazzling, as Season 5 tends to give us these shots at least one every episode that is just so stunning. But by way of his softening quirk, Mudman was able to evade and get out of dodge and just leave Ida here. And listen, Mudman's quirk is actually pretty impressive. It's as if the whole world becomes an ocean for him. He is able to just go through the ground and it's sort of reminiscent of Mirio and his quirk. But in this way, it is actually making an impact on the surrounding area. But in knowing that he can't handle Ida right now the way he is, he opted to go and support his classmates, which wasn't a bad idea. But from here, we would swap to Ojiro versus Spiral, and man, this was this was actually a pretty good looking fight. If anything, I don't know if there are some Tailboy fans out there, but for me, I would honestly just swap these two characters. If I could get a transfer, I would definitely accept it. Spiral looks way too cool here. His quirk is just so fascinating. And because he has these support items on his fingers, the speed to which he is able to spin, they just become like actual drills. It is scary. And at that, his quirk kind of reminds me of Red Tornado from DC. I don't know how many people are actually familiar with that character. But yet again, I continue to be amazed by the sleeper characters that are in Class 1B. Like, I'm actually curious, how many of you guys would be open to a spin-off series that focuses on Class 1B as opposed to Class 1A? I feel like that would be really, really interesting. I want to know more about these characters, and I love their quirks, and seeing them develop and what have you, I think that's pretty viable. The weight of the world may not be on the shoulders of these characters like it is for, say, Deku, or even Shoto in regards to his father and what have you, but we yet don't really know these characters all too well, so who's to say that they may not have their own backgrounds that are so complicated and what have you. But anyways, Ojiro was getting bodied, Spiral was just taking over and was about to land the finishing blow before Ida interrupted their one-on-one -on -one fight. Now, I understand his reasoning. It makes a whole lot of sense. Why would you not aid your comrade here? But, man, that was a really cool fight, and seeing that be interrupted in this way wasn't the most satisfactory thing. It wasn't all too satisfying. And again, because I don't really care for Ida, when he does things like this, the hater in me starts to, you know, jump out a bit. But Spiral was not going easy. He would just continue to swirl around as Ida was holding on to him, which was definitely a strenuous thing to hold on to for sure. But ultimately, he did manage to successfully capture him and secure a point for Class 1A. But from there, we would have Shoto versus Tetsu Tetsu, which was just so, so hype. Tetsu Tetsu is like the off-brand version of Kirishima, my favorite character, so to see him go in like this is amazing. And I am definitely underscoring him by calling him the carbon copy of Kirishima, as he is actually able to do things Kirishima is not and vice versa. Tetsu Tetsu has heat resilience. He has the ability to withstand the elements in ways that I don't imagine Kirishima necessarily would. But whereas Tetsu Tetsu is slick and smooth, Kirishima is jagged and rugged. So yeah, two characters with rather basic quirks being hardening, but different enough to where in one situation you may favor one over the other. And immediately for me, what makes this fight the best out of all the joint training battles that we have seen thus far is the fact that there are such stakes involved. We get to see how much the win matters to these characters. Tetsu Tetsu in particular spent time in an oven to train his quirk. That is intense. That just goes to show how badly he wants this, how badly he wants to succeed, how badly he wants to surpass his own limitations, and it shows. So Shoto blasted him with some fire and he just went straight through it. He got red hot but would not stop as he intended to brutalize Shoto. Now whenever Shoto gets beat up, it seems like he gets a flashback. He starts to think back to when his daddy was beating him up. And I know, I know we're tired of flashbacks with My Hero Season 5, what have you, what have you. But for me, this isn't so bad. It adds agency, and there's a bit more that we have never seen before added into the mix. So is it the worst thing ever? No. Are we tired of flashbacks in general? Sure, so I'll give you that. 
But regardless, Shoto was just heating up. He just kept rising, 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 ramping up the temperature to his utmost limitations, more than what he could actually handle. I mean, it got so bad that Tetsu Tetsu had to just get out of there. He had to step back. But ultimately, because it was so hard on Shoto's body, reasonably so, he said to himself, yeah, I'm just going to go in and see how this goes. If it's a battle of endurance, Tetsu Tetsu is up for the job. And Tetsu Tetsu, man, he is way too real. This man is way too raw. He is like on fire at this point. And this is going to leave a scar. This isn't just something that he can just brush off. And he is just still here feeling pain himself, just gripping onto Shoto and knocking some sense into him. And if I'm being completely honest with you, the only reason Shoto is still up to me is that power of plot armor because there is no way that this man, this metal man is just punching into you and you're still conscious. That doesn't make any sense to me. And he's on fire. Tetsu Tetsu without a shadow of a doubt here should have won. If it weren't for plot armor, if it weren't for Shoto being such a monumental character and what have you, he would have been out like a light. There is no question in my mind. But then we have Pony versus Shoji. And Pony, I, I don't know. She was kind of rubbing me the wrong way with some of these comments she had for Shoji, talking about him being an octopus and not liking octopus. It felt a bit prejudiced here, definitely. And I don't know, coming from someone who is also an anthropomorphic quirk wielder, it, it just feels a bit wrong. Like, my girl, you look like a My Little Pony character. What are you on about? And listen, although her quirk does have its limitations, it is still pretty impressive in regards to its versatility. It can do so many things. It can handle so much weight. It can lift her up and make her fly. It can make other people fly. It can be used as a projectile for damage. And it can be shot at rapid fire rates. This is pretty good. And again, Class 1A refuses to honor the 1v1 as Ojiro would jump into the fight and get the jump on Pony literally. But to rebalance things, Mudman would enter the fray and help his teammate out. But in this, we would actually get to see Ojiro do something a bit impressive. The amount of force to be had with his tail spinning was substantial. It's actually pretty impressive. I don't know if maybe he actually has super strength in regards to his tail or what. It's always been known to be strong and durable, but this was actually, it seemed to be out of the scope of what I would expect from him. But I guess everyone has improved, right? But Pony absolutely got the better of this man. She stabbed into his tail and he thought that she was just trying to get him to loosen his grip, but no, she took this man straight to jail, thus securing a point for class 1B. They were tied. But then we will go back to Shoto and Tetsu Tetsu who are still going at it. And at this point, Shoto was actually getting dizzy, not just from getting beat up on, but the fact that his heat was just so overwhelming. But now, thinking of the words of his father, Shoto would coalesce all of his heat, all of his flames into a single fist. As we would then see Tetsu Tetsu, who was no longer hardened, as Shoto would cock back his fist. And let me tell you, if he had hit Tetsu Tetsu here with this, Tetsu Tetsu would have died. He would have disintegrated. He would have been gone. And because of that, Mudman saved them both. Mudman saved Tetsu Tetsu's life and Mudman saved Shoto from catching a body because this would have been a massacre. Again, Shoto should have reasonably been gone a long time ago, but still. And through this, arguably inadvertently, Shoto would get knocked unconscious as Mudman was ready to secure their victory. But then would come in Ida who would just kick straight into the skull of Mudman, breaking off half of his mask at that. Now, after doing so and looking at the scenario, Ida would opt to save Shoto first and foremost, rather than taking down the quote unquote villains here. Now, this decision was made on account of the words of Stain, which just goes to show that like Stain had a big impact on Ida. Like, actually beyond the whole situation with his brother, Stain taught Ida a very valuable lesson about heroics. Like, this man Ida got so thoroughly sunned by that man Stain that he is still trying to live up to his expectations. You better be paying for this man's commissary at this point. But at this point, Tetsu Tetsu and Mudman were in rough shape and nearly going unconscious. But Mudman refused to let his team down because of his own mistakes, and so, 
He, with the help of Tetsu Tetsu, was able to topple a building and make it collapse on Ida as he would then harden it once more. The determination of these characters, these quote unquote side characters from class 1B, it is awe inspiring. Like this episode made me care about these characters. I care about Mudman now. But yeah, at this point, the only players left were Shoji and Pony. And with this, Pony would grab not only Shoto, but also her teammates as to avoid Shoji being able to capture them. The situation was not in her favor and she needed to make a tough call. And so she flew up with all of them and let the timer run out, allowing for the match to end in a draw. A very good decision, it's better than losing, and ultimately in regards to actual heroics and scenarios of that manner, this was the opportune play. This was the right decision. And at that, despite Vlad King's decree, I would have to say that Pony, to me, was the actual MVP. Not only did she secure the only captive that they were able to get, but she also avoided them taking the loss here. In the aftermath of this battle, we would get the reflection of some of our characters looking at their own performance and what have you. But next up, we have round four, which will feature Team Monoma versus Team Bakugo. So here's hoping that match goes anything like this one, because this was the best. This was amazing. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, drop a comment and let us know. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to Plot Armor with notifications on. We also have active Instagram and Twitter pages at PlotArmorYT, where you'll find the latest and greatest anime and manga news, memes, and information, so go ahead and follow that as well. Because when it comes to bringing you some of the best My Hero Academia content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. As always, I am Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.